This is the Con Guy Show. We are your home for news, opinions, and interviews from the world of comic cons and fandoms. Your ultimate insiders for all things con. Hey, welcome to the Con Guy Show. Coming to you straight from the heart of Hollywood, California. We are a show where we as filmmakers, nerds, and fans dive deep into the world of comic cons, fan events, films, and pop culture. My name is Jim, but we have a whole lot of other folks on the show with us tonight. Who else do we have? Hey everyone, it's Katie, aka Katie underscore Christine. I am a Twitch streamer, all around nerd. I like to say part-time adult, full-time nerd, but also a costume designer and cosplayer. Hey everyone, it's me, old buddy Ben Cleaver. I'm an actor, comedian, writer, uh, editor, all kinds of creative stuff here in Los Angeles in the creative arts industry and uh, super duper nerd, man. And uh, thank you for joining us on the podcast today. I'm excited to get into it. D-Man! Yeah, most people pronounce it Derek, but that's okay. I'll go with D-Man. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. D-Man. Um, yeah. D-Man. Um, Wait. No, that's weird. <laughs> anyway, hi, I'm Derek. I am a writer, uh, sometimes software engineer, and as of recently, a middle school teacher. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So, speaking of all the weird, nerdy things we're into, that's the strangest one I've done yet. Um, but yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> I am also a full time nerd. Rock on. I'm Danae Sam. I'm the other half of the mm-hmm. Samblings, one of the con girls, and one of the con guys here on theconguy.com. I am a writer and comedian based in LA, and I am so excited to drink alcoholic beverages with these other legal adults and talk some nerd. This is awesome. And we also have somebody back on the couch engineering the show tonight. What's up, everybody? It's Cheeseman hanging out here on the chair. Uh, screenwriter and one of the founding members of the con guy. Woohoo! That's a boy, Luke. By the way, Cheeseman's keeping everything running tonight. We got all these lights, we got all these cameras, we got all these microphones. Me and he Katie. makes it look like we know what we're doing. We, we are, you, yeah, cheese. Exactly. Yeah. We've got hamsters on wheels. He's got a <laughs> still back there. It's quite the operation. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. And we're going to have a lot of fun tonight as we talk about the 40th anniversary of 1984, one of the geekiest, nerdiest, coolest years for movies ever. But before we do that, Ben, what else do we have coming up tonight? Oh, well, we've got all kinds of fun things coming up. First, we're going to jump over to Katie with a con report, and then we'll be right back after that. <laughs> Hi y'all, Katie here with your end of February, beginning of March 2024 convention report. For a full list of the nearly 30 conventions happening this weekend, please check out theconguy.com. But for now, here are some highlights. First up, we have one of our favorites, Emerald City Comic Con, which is coming back February 29th through March 3rd at the Washington State Convention Center in Seattle, Washington. Another fun Thursday through Sunday convention this weekend is the Wild Wild West Steampunk Convention at the Casino del Sol in Tucson, Arizona. And for you Midwest weebs, you might want to check out Anime Crossroads. It's Indiana's largest anime convention, and it's happening March 1st through 3rd at the Embassy Suites Event Center in Plainfield, Indiana. Take a trip south to hit Coast Con, Mississippi's longest-running and largest sci-fi, fantasy, and gaming convention, happening at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum and Convention Center in Biloxi, Mississippi, also March 1st through 3rd. For a convention all about me, Katie Kawamoto, be sure to check out KawaCon. Okay, maybe KawaCon isn't all about me, but it is about anime and gaming. And it's happening at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center in San Antonio, Texas, March 2nd and 3rd. If you're feeling a little more old school, you may want to head to Morgan City, Louisiana for Louisiana RetroCon, one of the South's fastest growing conventions. This one is March 2nd and 3rd for Morgan City Municipal Auditorium. And finally, if you're chasing the Gulf Coast weather, Southwest Florida Con 2024 is your best bet to soak up some sun and nerdy fun. You can get there by going to Double Tree by Hilton, Fort Myers at Bell's Tower Shops in Fort Myers, Florida. That's a one day con on March 3rd. For all the information you need on these, as well as a plethora of other conventions, including their websites, please visit theconguy.com for more information. I'm Katie, and this has been your con report for February 28th through March 3rd, 2024. Until next time.
All right. Thank you very much, Katie. Katie. Good job. Just kidding. That, oh, was, uh, that, that, was, that was a great con report. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. And um, before the show started, you were telling me that you had something really special for our What's in the Box segment. What's in the f***ing box? Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not familiar, our What's in the Box segment is uh, uh, revealing collectibles, uh, just really cool stuff. You know, kind of an un half unboxing, half show and tell. Uh, so what did you bring for us today, Katie? I have... As you guys know, we've, this is our second show all together, reconvening in person. And I had a, something that I've held on to since 2018 oh, wow. to share with these lovely folks around me. That's a oh, lifetime really? ago. Yeah, a whole yeah. pandemic ago. So on Black Friday in 2018, I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but Stephen Amell has a wine company called yes. Knocking Point, and he does collabs with a lot of other celebrities, other causes. And in 2018, he collabed with one of our favorite nerds here at the con guy, Zachary Levi. Whoop. They do a thing at Comic-Con <laughs> called Nerd HQ. Rest in peace to Nerd HQ. RIP. Uh, but they did a collab together in 2018. And I bought this on Black Friday 2018. So we're five years, five years ago? Yep. I got this wine. <gasps> Does everyone have their emergency wine glasses? You know what? I do have oh. a glass. Right here. You know Funny what? You mentioned that. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm yeah. so glad we came prepared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cheese so, man, cheese man, you got a wine glass? All right. So this is the 2018 Knocking Point by Nerd HQ Wine. It is a Zinfandel. And I think that's pretty much all you guys need to know, mm -hmm. aside from the fact that we're going to open this. And Ben is going to open it. Oh, um, hold on. Bartender. Use your um, teeth. He's a trained professional. Ah, yes, key. indeed. Never leave home without it. Just so happened to have this. <laughs> and uh, so, yes, we have the... Uh, the Nerd HQ, a Knocking Point uh, Nerd HQ exclusive 2018 Red Zin, 100% uh, Zinfandel, Lodi, California, bottled by Knocking Point Wines, Walla Walla, Washington. So, okay. Yeah. Grown okay. in California, bottled in Washington. Mm -hmm. And while I'm doing this, we can talk amongst I, ourselves. I tried it in 2018 because I did get two bottles. I did nice. try it, but I haven't had it in a while, so I can't remind, remember it very well. Are they still doing this winery? This uh, wine? I don't know for sure. I haven't wow. seen um, a lot of updates from Knocking Point. I do follow them on Instagram. So if they're no longer a thing, y'all, I apologize, but you could check it up online. I love that it's Nerd HQ. <laughs> Um, court, this, so, this wine so has it, been in many different houses and removed, so it could. It lived through a pandemic. It's, it's might have been, been through some stuff. Damaged a little bit. So this was Stephen Amell and who else? That's Zachary, Zachary Levi. Levi. That's correct. Oh, he was this guy. Who, yes. Yeah. Or Shazam. Or Shazam. To, or Flynn Rider. Or Eugene, as we learned. With a lot of times yeah. the wine cork, as you know, will break. If yeah. it's an older wine that's been sitting there for a bit. Oh, oh that really? Oh, that's where the interesting. Can I just I don't think say that, 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 like, I love that it's Nerd HQ, because that was the first time I really hung out with you guys, minus Ben. Oh, um, yeah. Nerd HQ is where I met Katie. Obviously, it was through Luke and Jim and Derek, but we met at Nerd HQ. Shout out to Zachary Levi for making that happen. Yeah. Not really, but we want him on the show. Yes, we're really. Play him up. Yeah, it was an awesome thing, and we were very sad that we're very yeah. sad that it doesn't exist anymore. We know that there's ah. some negotiations with the San Diego Comic Con. It, it didn't work out, but Zach moved to Texas, mm -hmm. and and Comic Con is in. It used to be in his rearview mirror, but he has shown up recently, especially to promote Shazam and different things. Yeah. You know, everything that I've heard over the last few years, because I I love Nerd, Nerd HQ at San Diego Comic Con, and and so I kept reading up on if there were any updates or anything, anything that anytime they've ever mentioned it, it always kind of Gave the impression of tis not dead but sleeping, you yes. know. Uh, so we'll find out. Jim, well, may I pour you some wine? Oh, of course, my well, friend. Pour, pour some for Katie first. Oh, oh yeah, because this is Katie, bottle, her wine. She's been saving it. I would, I would like to point ahead. out Zachary Levi has been very open about his mental health and a lot of the struggles he's been through. Please read his book, Radical Love. It's amazing. Our mom is a therapist and she's even recommended it to some of her clients. Um, so I think that's part of the reason him going through those things is why we have not had. Yes, please. I would like to get tipsy. Um, <laughs> that's part of the reason he has not done as many things, but he wants to do more and he is doing a lot. Like, despite what he's been through, that man is very strong. He's doing so many things for the nerdy world. This is like half of a sip, Benjamin. I think he wants to make sure everybody gets some. Yes, he wants you know. to make sure. Fair. Yeah. 
And then oh, we can yes, go please. and top off everybody's glasses. Yeah, I should, sorry. Yeah. Katie is supplying me free wine. I should not complain. Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. Thank I'm you, Ben, for pouring. I'm glad we can finally welcome. share this together as kind of a celebration of us reconvening all together in person. I think it was something so special. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, standard mm -hmm. pour of wine is six ounces, right? Is it? Oh, really? That seems like a lot. Mine is me. just like, how far can I get it into the glass Did without spilling? Did you guys spilling? see the cup of wine that we poured for Danae earlier? So that I poured for girl mathing wine. That's the, the term. Girl, girl math. mathing. Girl math wine. Girl like, dinner. How much That's can you put in the uh, What or whom are we drinking to? To Zacharias. To Zach and Stephen. And, Zach and Stephen. And to and the, the knocking the point. people and things Huzzah. that we love. Huzzah. As a free, you know. To an awesome 2024 with the con guys, guys. The guys. Cheese been on the couch. Oh, Jeez. Geez. All right. And bottoms up, ladies. Let's see. Let's taste this. Mm. Well, before we have too much to fix in post, yes. yeah. should we should we talk about what we've been nerding out about lately? Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say, while we're mm -hmm. enjoying our glass and letting it breathe and so on and so forth, what have you been geeking out? Derek, what, what have you been geeking out? about Lego. um well lego as i have not shut up about i recently had a birthday a pretty big one and had a he turned seven yes it's a he's a fan that uh, was kind of like the birthday party well, we are going to be talking about the great things that came out in 1984 um one of them was me from <laughs> my mother um it's yeah, so beautiful so I'm the same age as a lot of these movies that we'll be talking about tonight and i celebrated that um, with a Lego Harry Potter party recently, which I, yeah, I've put together some of the new sets that I got. And um, well, for clarification, yeah. when you turned 30, you I had, had a Lego, a Lego party. party. But yes. now that you're a grown up man who is yes, 40, I'm much more mature. So I had a Lego, Lego Harry, Harry Potter, Potter party. party. Yeah. Um, had a lot of my Lego Harry Potter sets out for decoration, mm -hmm. had a lot Indeed. of general Harry Potter decorations and the Lego competition uh, amongst friends, children and adults alike. It was a good time, and I've still got more Lego to put together because people took the hint and got me what I wanted for my birthday. <laughs> Including, what was the big one? The Derek? big one was Lego Rivendell, which has been out for a while, and I haven't been able to get it until now because it's an expensive set. Is anybody else geeking out about anything? Besides I this have been re-watching Archer. Oh. And if you're not into adult animation. This is this, the final season, right? The final season just dropped. I have not seen it yet. Oh, yeah. I have gone back to the beginning. Wow. I'm I'm still Archer at Isis back when that was just a mythical cre character and yeah. not <laughs> something else. Yeah. So but bizarre. Um, yeah, I just like, I'm so excited because I've yet to see how they've incorporated the passing of Jessica Walter, RIP. Mm -hmm. um, I understand. She's the they, best. They, She's the yeah, best. Yeah. They, they didn't write her. They, yes, they wrote her out of the show, but they did it in a very respectful way, from what I understand. Um, and so much has happened in this show. Like, it's so interesting knowing what I know about, like, ISIS, cult, like, falling apart and them selling cocaine and then being in L.A. and then all of the Dreamland seasons. It's so neat to go back and watch just the very much, like, uh, making fun of 007 James Bond Archer. And I know I wanted to be like, you know what I'm geeking out on? <laughs> it's archer <laughs> um if you guys follow me on twitter or instagram or anything you're very aware that i fell down a k-pop rabbit hole no this way! last year i just celebrated my one year being a k-pop fan i know congratulations to me and so lately that's kind of been everything that i've been, that's been encompassing it but i did watch parasite for the first time oh. um i know i'm a so few good. years late on seeing parasite but um, I I watched Wu Sheik in a, and you a call show. yourself Asian. Listen, I have I could say things about that. We're not going to <laughs> anyway. So I watched Wu Sheik on a show with a member of BTS and kind of how I found out about him. And then I was like, I'd always wanted to watch Parasite, but it was one of those movies where I'm like, is this a movie I want to watch on just a random Tuesday? It could have been. Let's be fair, I could have watched it on a random Tuesday, but I watched it. My roommate who watched it with me, she goes is this a horror film? And I'm like, no, 
She's like, it's called Parasite. It sounds like it should be a horror film. <laughs> there, which, to there be are fair, parts of it that are creepy. Yeah, yeah. Creepy, creepy, but it's more suspenseful. Yeah, but you know, suspense. with with best pictures with the Oscars, they usually go like either a political route or um, about the industry, and that's kind of mm-hmm. always the best pictures that win. Mm-hmm. So after watching Parasite, I was so stoked to see a movie like this had won best picture. Mm-hmm. It's very different, and of course, it being an entirely film. A, film co- completely in korean yeah that's a first, huge thing right it's the first um foreign language film to win yeah. best picture and it was fantastic yeah. it was definitely as good as everybody said i would 100 percent watch it again most of it there were some parts that i did not see coming but i did predict some because i do watch a lot of movies like this but i do have to say i have to applaud that entire like cast and crew because it was it was very very good and i enjoyed it so fantastic Sweet. Uh, All right, Jim, are you geeking out? I am out geeking it, out. Jim? I've been geeking out about something for about four to six weeks now, and I'm, I'm just now starting to come down for my ultimate geek about a Japanese film which I have fallen in love with. Is it Godzilla? Godzilla minus one is the best Godzilla film ever sorry, made. I. I have not seen it yet, unfortunately, but I have heard yeah. absolutely nothing but praise for this film. I've it heard good only things. cost $15 million to make, which is remarkable. For those of you who aren't in the know, that right. is incredibly low oh, for this type of a movie, yeah. especially. It's a lot of money for a person to talk about yeah. spending on anything. Mm-hmm. But as far as making a movie, especially something like a Godzilla movie that requires like all these The most recent and- legendary and universal Godzilla films are north mm-hmm. of $200 million to make those films, yeah. plus marketing <clears throat> expenses. Mm-hmm. And, and listen, I love anything Godzilla, but nothing has hold, can hold a candle to the this Godzilla minus one. It's amazing. It is very steeped in mm. Japanese storytelling and Japanese culture. That's what I hear. And yeah. so far it's made over $105 million worldwide wow. on a $15 million budget. And the special effects, when you told me it's only $15 million, I'm kind of like still kind of like, really? It looks like it's a hundred to $200 million movie. But um, if you haven't seen it yet, go see it. It just this week left U.S. theaters, which is sad, but I'm hoping it comes to U.S. streaming services very soon. Um, it was uh, for a while. It, just this last week, it finished its black and white version. I heard about that. Yeah. Godzilla minus one minus color is what it's called. And that's a genius name. I saw someone post about it this weekend and they said it was fantastic. I think that's fantastic. But the reason I love it so much is for years, and I don't know if you guys have heard me kind of griping about this. I'm getting tired of Godzilla being just a nice pet that comes out to save humankind and we pet him on the nose and he goes away. Godzilla in Godzilla minus one is stinking ferociously scary. He's it's like watching jaws on land. There's a scene where he is chasing down a boat and a dun, 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 and he's going after it to kill it. And I love it. I love everything about it. Boy, I sound like such a sinister person, but I'm going to tell you, Godzilla is back in form. It's it's based in 1945, right after the atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. It has something to say that's important about the kamikaze pilots and how their cult, the culture of the kamikaze pilots was a rough culture. If you Mm -hmm. did not finish your mission, you were shunned by your community. Boy, and that, by the way, a lot of this film has no Godzilla in it, but it's a great film regardless of that. So if you guys get a chance when Godzilla minus one comes back to theaters or comes back to streaming, make sure you check it out. In my opinion, and some of my friends, the best Godzilla movie ever made. Cheese on couch. What are you? What are you nerding out about, brah? Brah. Brah. Oh uh, yeah, I've rewatched Entourage recently, which is actually Koi Jandro, mm. who's done a lot of kind of stuff with us. Uh, he did a panel. Entourage guys are touring and mm. doing cons now, and I just rewatched the whole thing, and then I also uh, watched the movie. It's kind of fun. I used to work as a movie extra, so then I kind of got to see myself pop up a couple times. And oh, that was pretty <laughs> nice, cool. nice. That's and awesome. then most recently, I, I've been watching uh, The Bear. Yeah. So, so good show. It's all season one. Season two, you can really tell they're kind of bringing in some bigger cast names, yeah. and then some of the episodes are longer and everything. So I'd say those kind of are some of the stuff I've been one an older thing and then the newer thing with the bear on. Koi Jandrew just had a reunion of the entourage cast down at Megacon Orlando which w- guys we got to keep an eye on this convention is turning into one of the largest conventions in the United States probably 150,000 people just in the past 4 days wow that is uh i mean that's bumping up there against New York and San Diego so. yeah really all right 
Oh, yeah, Dragon Con, ATL. Yeah. All right. All right. We see you, MegaCon. We see you. <laughs> um, I, I guess I'll wrap it up. Uh, my thing is, ever since the pandemic, uh, one of my biggest things is my comfort show, which is any Star Trek mm. series. I feel that. So, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I started off, um, you know, during the pandemic, you just wanted something that was comforting and made you feel good. Mm -hmm. And so I was just speeding through uh the next generation and after i finished that i moved on to deep space nine after i finished that i went on to voyager i just recently finished voyager and it's usually like i'll watch an episode or maybe a half an episode before i fall asleep at night i love voyager oh i love Jane voyager too. Um, she's pretty amazing and so I just recently finished Voyager and I was like, well, I guess I'll keep watching in release order. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen Star Trek Enterprise, the TV series. Oh. So I started Enterprise. I'm pretty close to finishing the first season now. And I love it. I mean, it's obviously everybody agrees it's the worst theme song. Yeah. Of any of the Star Trek. I mean, <laughs> I, I've got faith of the heart. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, but <laughs> yeah. it's no Jerry Goldsmith's theme. It Absolutely doesn't end with created by Gene Roddenberry. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, but I really like the characters. And uh, yeah, so it's a lot of fun. I mean, that's what I'm geeking out about. That's probably going to be my main geek thing, unless I find other things to latch on to here and there for the next few episodes. But that's what I'm geeking out about right now. Now is the time that we switch over to the main topic of tonight's episode. We're all raising our glasses for some reason. <laughs> and Let me not put it in front of Derek's face. As, Thanks. As Jim mentioned before, mm -hmm. we are talking about the year 1984, mm -hmm. 40 years ago. My mm -hmm. birth year, Derek's birth year. Indeed. Some of the greatest nerd, uh, sci-fi, geeky, adventure, et cetera, et cetera, movies the exact type of thing that we'd love to talk about here at the con guys. So we have often held up 1982 as the ultimate year in geek moviedom. You know, they 82 had ET and poltergeist and, and star Trek, the wrath of Khan and so many year. fantastic mm -hmm. movies, but, 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 but 1984 gave us classics that still to this day hold up and that are still producing sequels and reboots and mm -hmm. to this day, we're still talking about, and that's why we're going to talk about this year. 1984 was an awesome year. This week, we revisit the magic time in movie making. 1984, the year they gave us Derek. The yeah. Year, the year they gave oh. us Ben. Yep. And it gave us the true revenge of the nerds at the box office. All right, guys, yeah. I'm going to start throwing some movies at you. We'll start at the beginning of the year and go through. I want to know. Oh, and by the way, uh, drinking. Game. Oh, yeah, what's the yeah, game? Yeah. How does it go? Every time you've seen one of these movies, you take a drink. <laughs> not in the, not in just theater. In not in general. Just if you've general. seen it. If you've seen the movie. I've got some more wine. We're going to be going a lot. It so that it makes wine. us reference another film, and you have seen that film. Take a drink. Oh, yeah. I'm going to run out of this. But let's, it, what's important, I want to know, what do you guys remember about this film? What is it about this mm -hmm. film that kind of stuck with you? You know, and let's talk about if each film, how much, uh, if, if it is worth discussing, mm -hmm. What was the cultural impact of that film? Like, why is it that we still kind of remember it today? Does it hold up? And then are any sequels or, or reboots in order? All right, here we go. We're going to start in 1984, May 8th. Perhaps a film that, by the way, this is a film that I mm -hmm. kind of credit for me meeting and getting to know Ben very much so at a WonderCon or San Diego, San Diego Comic-Con. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom came out May 8th, 1984. Drink, Drink. up. Hmm. Mm -hmm. so, tell me what do you guys think about this film i remember Monkey's being brain. yep i remember being sent out of the room on certain scenes when i was a kid while they were watching it and then later i watched it and realized what was happening in that scene and it didn't bother me nearly as much as i thought it would but, <laughs> but the imagination is always worse right i remember um, our mom telling me i wasn't allowed to watch indiana jones anymore as a kid she was oh. like i don't think i want you watching indiana jones and like guys that was my favorite set of movies i didn't listen and i watched them over and over again anyway well, yeah because we why? watched them at why? nemo's house we watched them so, over because i loved indiana jones like yeah, wait, why couldn't you watch it? wait i couldn't watch it either okay because yeah sex in in implications no they're oh, monkey's the brain 
violence, dark Oops. magic, a lot of things, which yeah. ironically enough, this is our mom's favorite of the Indiana Jones Yeah, she movie. actually really likes that. It's, so yeah. it's not my favorite, but like I was just, I like I confessed that to her when I was like 13. I was like, mom, I kept watching Indiana Jones anyways. And she was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> they always know, when, first of when, all. Yeah, when I was a kindergartner and we walked up to the mic and it was like, I'm so-and-so, when I grow up, I want to be this. I was like, I want to be an archaeologist because that's what Indiana that, Jones was. And now you are. <laughs> so to pretty be, much in a way almost mm -hmm. i think that's a good statement that Danae right, made because fiction. so yeah, many movies from that time in like the 80s early 90s somehow influenced what all of us thought we wanted to be when we would grow up mm -hmm. whether it was a archaeologist or a paleontologist because of jurassic park like we all had that that a connection with a marine it marine biologist because of jaws mm. Yeah. Well, I you know, you know, I thought I wanted to be all these different things, and then I realized, well, if I'm an actor, I can be all those different things. Exactly. Yeah. However, I, I wasn't oh, allowed to watch I'll it either. It in a minute. To, to just go off of what Danae said. But mine was strictly because of the darkness factor and the yeah. scene where he gets his heart ripped out. Kali um, and to, <laughs> to be... To be fair, unlike Danae, who said this is her favorite of the films, my no, not my favorite. It's our mom's. Favorite. Oh, okay. Yeah, my favorite. Because Claire, my favorite will always and forever be Last Crusade. Yes. Same. Always and forever. I watched that movie so many times, but I was not allowed to watch Temple of Doom, and because I wasn't allowed to watch it and didn't watch it for a while, it doesn't hold the same nostalgia to me as it does to other people who watched it when it came out. See, I also love this movie because Ben, I first met you and Bree at a con guy show when yes. you guys were dressed as indie and short round and yeah. they were that was so awesome they were yeah, so good really and i was in a very cheap ray cosplay and i was like <laughs> i got nothing on these guys i'm gonna sit on the couch and not talk well that's one of my things is like the i for a very brief period of time i was a a, a cosplayer you know and and temple of doom indie was my first very serious uh, cosplay. They were for WonderCon in 2015. I did. I spent a lot of time on a Cyclops from the X-Men, the cartoon, mm -hmm. and Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones. Half because Temple of Doom is my favorite indie movie, but also the other half is you don't need the jacket, which is probably the most expensive part <laughs> of yes. the costume in general. Yeah. So, um, but it also allowed me to be creative and I like studied the sideshow figure and the movie poster to see exactly which sleeve is torn where and where the mm -hmm. dirt marks are and yeah, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Cosplay so, problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was like, that was one of those things that I really like ADHD hyper focused on of like getting every little detail as right as I could. Um, but I, I do like, and I just did an episode of John Carlos McMaster's podcast a few months back. Uh, it's called Movies Worth Talking About. And uh, we'll throw a, a link in below. Yeah. But, um, we did a whole episode and we talked for like an hour and a half, two hours about the Temple of Doom. And just the highs, the lows, everything in between. And uh, we quoted, I think, a couple times, just, ooh, snake surprise. You know? <laughs> What's the surprise? That whole the dinner scene is just classic. And we'll talk about this in just a second, but Indiana Jones... And a, another movie on our list have the distinction of causing a change in the way that movies were were rated. Yeah, they started this year. All right, June third. Okay, that was May eighth. Was Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom? June third. We talked about Star Trek Two: The Wrath of Khan, which was mm -hmm. followed up this year by Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. Hey, resident. Um, Star Trek expert, what do you think about this film? You know, I saw it as a child, a TV edited version, and I haven't seen it since. Are you kidding me? Is yeah. nobody that does on not this speak on this well no. of this movie. Well, I have. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So, Who saw the movie? I saw it, so I'll take a drink. I need more wine. Quick, wine him. Quick, wine emergency. Build yeah. the flag in the chest. Let's see if there's wine needed over here. Here, pass that down. Oh, they got some. Oh yeah, I, I, I still just, have Zach's drink. wine. I had a drink for this one already. Um, I don't remember very much about it. It just, I remember all the adults telling me it wasn't very good. <laughs> And as a kid, I watched it and was kind of like, well, it's all right. And now I just never felt the need to go back and watch it again. Have the way I did it as an adult. Have you no. seen it as an adult? So, Wrath of Khan, I've seen a few times as an adult. So yeah. what you're saying is Star uh, Trek isn't great and it's just not worth watching. <laughs> 
Oh my if God, you're just somebody... listening to the audio version, you can't see the death stare I'm giving my sister. I feel like <laughs> somebody going to die tonight. He's just What's nodding that? and agreeing Why with me. Yeah. Just, just edit. But Derek, how does it hold up? Like you don't, you haven't seen this since you were a child, right? Right. And I'd like to go back and watch it again now because there was this uh, reputation for the Star Trek movies that the odd numbered ones were bad and the even numbered ones were good. By the way, that's not but, a bad, that's not an untrue statement. <laughs> well, but I don't think it's so much that the odd numbered ones are bad, but they just are. the even numbered ones are better. Like I, yeah. the original Star Trek, the motion picture, I still enjoy. I think it's a really interesting movie. I think it's a really cool concept. I think Wrath of Khan is much better. Yeah. So this one like isn't as good as for the voyage home, but it might still be a pretty good movie. For Final those of you who haven't seen and... our episode, Derek and Thomas Parham did an episode of Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan, the movie that saved the Star Trek franchise. So yeah. anyways, go ahead. Um, yeah. And a lot of it, I mean, it always comes down to the biggest thing, of course, is having a really good script to go from. And then all the other elements can be built on top of that. Um, but yeah, I think once you get into some of the next generation movies, it's not quite the same trend as with the original cast. All right, let's go on to yeah. the next movie. Mm -hmm. It's June the 8th, which is just one week after Star Trek 3 was released. We can't release a movie which to this day is still shaking and spooking us. Yep. Ghostbusters! <laughs> ben, Ghostbusters came out in 1984, and we know who to call now when mm -hmm. we have ghosts, but we I don't think we'll ever be the same. Tell us. How is this movie still shaking us today? And what do you think about it? Well, it's, it's a kid. Yes. I think th there's an interesting dichotomy between Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 when it came out because this was literally, you know, this was Ivan Reitman. This was these guys who are Saturday Night Live uh, alums. Mm -hmm. They wrote it as a comedy for adults. Mm -hmm. And if you watch it, there are a few things in there that you're like, oh, that's. That's not for kids. That's naughty. And <laughs> um, and then after after it came out, all of a sudden they realized, hey, kids are really into this mm -hmm. franchise. And so that's where you get uh, the real Ghostbusters animated series and all this kind of stuff. And Ghostbusters 2 is much more uh, kid driven. And, and I think people just loved ghosts. They loved the design. They loved the creativity that was behind it. Um, and much like Indiana Jones, continuing to spawn sequels. We had mm -hmm. uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife uh, a year or two ago. Uh, another uh, Ghostbusters sequel coming out in yeah. this kind of uh, resurrection of the franchise, so to speak. Uh, Reanimation, if you will. Yeah, so my thing about Ghostbusters is I, I did not see this when... So when growing up in my house, I watched my dad watched a lot of things on t on TV because I lived in the mountains, so we had satellite, and he was a channel surfer. So my my dad would switch back and forth between movies all the time. So it was rare for me to watch a movie full in its entirety. So I'd probably seen bits and pieces of Ghostbusters, but I did not see the full film in its entirety until like a few years ago, um, before the most recent one came out. I watched it with my roommate because she was like, I can't believe you haven't seen this. You need to see it. So we watched that. And then we watched the one with all female cast. Uh, too and then i watched the new movie loved the new movie and i actually this is one of those movies that i watched later in life that did hold up i've always been a fan of sigourney weaver and i haven't seen her do a film that i haven't liked this is one of my favorite i mean I, her my favorite role for sigourney Weaver is my the very first role she ever did 1979 alien i loved that movie so much aliens 1986 i know my years was also fantastic but ghostbusters i just loved her in this and she her and Bill Murray, that was just the, amazing. But I know that I'm going to throw it over to Cheeseman on the couch. But Cheeseman, you kind of, um, Ghostbusters was something that you grew up with, but also the Ghostbusters uh, cartoon series. Tell me about how that turned out for you. Well, uh, actually, I didn't really see the Ghostbusters movies till I was probably more like in a middle school type thing. And kind of like Katie was saying, you know, it's very just timeless and like one of those movies, you know, like Spielberg Zemeckis, where it, it really does a good job. The comedy still holds up. Even the kind of the way they did the special effects with the Marshmallow Man and Slimer and all that was kind of innovative for the time. And it was interesting because it was Slimer was based on Jim Belushi, who was a good friend of the cast and everything. But um, my parents didn't, I guess, want me to see it at the age I was. So they did. They went to go see it. So they were fans of going to see it. And then I did watch a little bit of the cartoon series, but then there was this episode with the boogeyman 
<laughs> that actually probably terrified a lot of children, but it got me and my sister so scared that we weren't allowed to watch Ghostbusters the cartoon for a while. But Katie, I want to ask you about something. The same exact week that Ghostbusters came out, and I know you weren't seeing it in the movie theater, there was another movie that came out. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, May 8th, was directed by Steven Spielberg. On June 8th, another movie came out that was executive produced by Steven Spielberg. Busy guy. These two movies together caused an uproar of like, we are having so much like, like, like gore and violence in our films. We can't call these PG. So it caused the PG 13 rating to be formed. Yeah. This movie, my man, Steve, I love this movie. Ralph. Gremlins, Gremlins, Katie. Oh, wait, wait, wait. who has seen Gremlins? Seen oh, of course. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. Clink. This right. is this is actually part of my holy trinity of Christmas movies that I like to watch, which is Die Hard, Batman Returns, and Gremlins. Which I didn't oh, realize. So magical. It came out June eighth, but the it's the same date. Yeah, but it's a Christmas film. It's a Christmas yeah. movie. That's so weird. It has the most disturbing Christmas story: Santa Claus up the chimney. Yeah, I don't. I don't even like to think about that. Oh, it's the worst. It's, it, it, yeah. it's the worst. I have no memory of this. Please I do not it, clarify. I watch that scene every morning when I wake up. Katie, what do you Start think about Gremlins? Day. Katie, what do you think about Gremlins? I also saw Gremlins. Late. I don't know when I saw Gremlins for the first time, but I did rewatch it a few years ago because my roommate's not has wasn't super into horror, but now through me has been going down that route. And so I made her watch Gremlins a few Christmases ago. I know I watched it at Christmas because I know I was very specific with making sure we watch it at Christmas because it is a Christmas film. I didn't realize until we were making the list for this podcast that Gremlins and Ghostbusters came out on the Neither same did day. I. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Both those movies, so and iconic. Both horror comedies yeah. in yeah. June. I would argue though, only one of them has survived to this day is still, still influencing yeah. us. Mm -hmm. People still love Gremlins. Yes. It's yeah. just not franchisable enough to be know. like, we should do a Gremlins remake, well, even well, though they yeah. could print money if they made yes. a Gremlins remake. But you know what they'd do. They'd fill it full of CGI and everything would be on a blue screen or a green screen. And a bunch of okay. podcasts just like us would I, tear it apart. I have a question for you guys, though. <laughs> yeah. But question. they'd still make a lot of money. If yeah. they were to make a sequel now, 40 years later, do you think they go like the more... Gremlins 2 route or the more Gremlins route? Like more no. comedy or more horror? It'd be super super comedy. They would go super funny, super Groucho Marx. Remember the Groucho Marx? And the and the, 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 um, the, the big titted Gremlin? No, the, the, oh. the, the drag queen Gremlin. Yeah, yeah. it was fan. Yeah, she was thing. so funny. It was so funny. And like they went really into the comedy. And I remember in the day, because I'm older than you guys, I read an article about how Gremlins 1 was trying to find where it belonged. Yep. Gremlins 2 found its way it's exactly where it needed to be uh, i think it is very still relevant today and i think people would be interested in it neca's done such a big line of of gremlin figures and all that so like and it's all over like the targets and different stores of walmart's where they sell them so i think there's still a big market for it if they're doing all this nostalgic type stuff we're going to move on in 1984 the summer of 1984 weeks so far we have indiana jones and temple of doom star trek 3 the search for spock ghostbusters gremlin i mean for crying out loud how do you top that here's how you top that 1984 the movie Oh, this was a movie that uh, we are still celebrating today because of the series on Netflix called Cobra Kai. Yes. It's The Karate Kid, 1984, Bananarama, Cruel, Cruel Summer. All I've right, let's it. do I it. Really I don't think it. I ever saw the whole thing. So I'm gonna get out of town. Yeah, I've seen part of it. I've Should I take a sip? Or can I just sit this one out? Okay, you can, you can sit this out because that's sin. Ben's never seen... Karate Kid. I've, I'm very familiar with all of the, the wax on, wax off, and Mr. Miyagi, and all the everything that goes along with Karate Kid because everybody has talked about it since I was literally born. So I'm familiar with it. I just never watched it as a kid. Did like, you guys see it? I've seen part of it. I've seen the episode of Community see it? where they do the Karate Kid stage show. Did you see any of it? Wait, stop, stop. I am In falling full. out of love with my co-host yes, right. right now. Out of all of these um, films, out of <laughs> all of help. these films, the Karate Kid is the only one that had an act. 
a best actor nomination, right? Really? Yep. Yep. Because it was was it Pat Morita? It was Pat Morita for best supporting. Oh my god! Talking about that. his Mr. wife. Miyagi. Yeah. Talk, yeah, Mr. Miyagi. Like I think it was in the scene talking about losing his wife. Yeah. It was so good because I mean, how can you top that? That was all I had to say. So the thing about the Karate Kid is I haven't watched it in a really long time, to be fair. But you've seen it? I've seen it, yes. Of course I've seen it. Um, Okay, to preface this, if you guys don't know, I am Japanese. I am half Japanese. I feel like if I didn't see this movie, that would be a little weird. Here's the thing about the Karate Kid is even if you haven't seen it, you've heard it quoted. You yeah, are familiar absolutely. with scenes from it. So even if you haven't seen the whole movie in its entirety, you have seen parts of the movie. And if you haven't, that's quite impressive. I think the Karate Kid has had a lot of resonance because we are in season five or six of Cobra Kai, which ends this year and has been an amazing journey. Have you, what have you thought about it's, it? Well, I was just going to say, it's a cultural yeah. phenomenon. Yes. yes. All right. So June of, of 1984 was one of the most amazing months ever, but also... We're moving into July. No, 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 no. Yeah, July. July. July of 20. July of 20, a movie which... July 20. July 20th. Not July of... 20. Of 1984. July 20th of 1984. Never-ending story. Have you seen it? All right. Look at what you see. The best thing about Never-Ending Story, in my opinion... Is the singing song in Stranger Things because I yeah. didn't love this movie. All right, I'm the, throwing it to version, you guys. Right the now. version in Stranger Things I think is better than the one from the credits of the movie. I'm You're just saying. Actually, I mean, depends yeah. on the version. But have you guys heard the um, punk cover by Newfound Glory? I feel like uh, I have. I don't think I have. I should you probably have. have because I, I haven't heard that in name car. in a yeah, long time. Newfound Glory. Never ending story. Newfound Glory. <laughs> they rhyme. <laughs> I. Um, you know what I, right. I love about this movie? I, I did not see it until I was in high school and it was streaming on Netflix. And this was mm, back was in when, college. when Netflix was in the early stages of streaming. And I remember kind of laughing at the whole thing of like, it's a marsh and we're falling into it. And our therapist mom was like, yes, but that's the thing. When you feel sad, you're going to keep sinking into the sadness until you find a way out. And she explained how it's actually very fitting to have this like epic, you know, the dark night of the soul adventure when Atreyu and his horse, they're in the Marsh of Sadness and the horse, it's really sad. Spoiler alert, if you hadn't seen this movie Spoiler. Many years ago, um, is like the, it's if you think about sad things, you keep falling into this marsh. But if you can try and focus on your goal and just keep going forward, you get out of it. So the horse sinks deeper and Atreyu loses his horse. And after yeah, that, he's walking sad. out on foot because he's like, because he didn't focus on the sadness. But that's how it is when you're in a sad moment. Yeah. You, that's all you can think about. It's and it's like Dementors. It is like Dementors. You know, something sad will pull you even deeper. Oh, and make you even sadder. But the yeah. never ending story has a lot of great themes yeah. in it. Yeah. So, like, the thing about the never ending story is I know I've seen this movie and I drank because I know I've seen it, but I'm pretty sure I blocked it out of my memory. Because it's, it's not it's not an easy film to watch. It's got that big flying long stick puppet. Uh, also Falcor, the luck dragon. But also Falcor. Falcor is a luck dragon. To be fair, have a one at home. This is 80s movies are the reason why every single one of us thought that quicksand was going to be a bigger deal than it actually is in real life. <laughs> yeah, I have a friend who did like get stuck in quicksand in, in like recent like within the last year, basically, and it was really scary. Oh my he god, was died. it on the 405? No, but <laughs> he works like for the county doing sciencey stuff out in the wilderness, and he like told us told us this story, but he also was not you know, he, he's younger than us. He's like Gen Z. So. But either way, Is like a real thing. It yeah, actually exists. But like, not just but, on Gilligan's Island. No, it's it's a real thing, but like yeah. we all thought that quicksand was going to be like something we encounter at least once in our life everything we watched Everywhere. when we were kids had had they, had they, had, they had three things in common yeah. yeah one a kid had a skateboard two <laughs> a kid knew karate three there was quicksand like i mean four <laughs> confusing candles with real sticks of dynamite yes yeah, yeah. yeah. i'll have the goonies mm -hmm. 
I will just say briefly about Never Ending Story. I was actually someone who watched the second one more. I had it taped mm -hmm. off TV, the one with Jonathan Brandis. Mm -hmm. So like I wasn't as familiar with the first one because I watched the second one so much. Jonathan Brandis was such a you know great actor and so many things of our childhood. Uh, rest in peace miss that guy but uh yeah i was i was more in the never ending story two but i'm sure never ending story one's probably a better quality movie i think yeah, i did see it i don't know far with each other yeah okay but I, uh, yeah, it's been a long time since i've seen yeah, two. Yeah. i have only yeah. seen parts of two but i just remember the joy of like into the boy who is reading the story in one got to <laughs> enter the story into yeah. like he actually mm -hmm. instead of just reading about what was happening he was a part of the action and that was so cool to me uh, As a seventeen-year-old, when I watched it for the first time, right. <laughs> I still haven't well, seen the and, second one. And no, I didn't like it. The wolf at the end is terrifying. The talking, the black wolf, mm -hmm. the talking back. Yeah, wolf. the Jim Henson effect. Uh -huh. Yep. The Jim Henson effect. Real quick, I'm just going to throw it out there. CGI, no matter how good it is, within a couple of years, will always look like oh, that's CGI from a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But a really cool puppet. Will always look like a. Can we really just put a stake puppet. down and say this is the con guy's opinion right now? Okay, it's the con guy's opinion, but it's also fact. No, I just like that. But no, that, that wolf was scary because he was a puppet. Yeah. With the Bat Watch is telling me we're running out of time on this episode. But Jim, don't we have uh -huh. a bunch of other movies to go over? We've only go over, gone over six movies from 1984, 1984. Such a big year. We've got at least five more to go over, and I don't um, want to short shrift a, them. S H R I F T. So, guys, we are going <laughs> short change. Short change. Uh, short shrift. I like the word short shrift. Shrift is it, that a real thing? It's it's a word it that's familiar. Yeah, but, but if you sure. say it wrong, you get banned off radio. Shit. Anyways, guys, we got a lot of movies to talk about in 1984. So my name is Jim. You can find me at James D. Fry on Instagram. Hey, everyone. I am KT underscore Christine. KT underscore Christine with a C. You can find me across all social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, Twitter. I'm sorry, X. Uh, so you can find me across all those things. I am very active on all of them. Uh, I'm trying to get back into Twitch streaming this year. So please follow me on those platforms if you wish to see more. I'm Danae. I'm the other half of the Gone Gr Con Girls, half of the Samblings. The Gone Girls? The Gone Girls. I mean... The Gone Show! Bam! I also would love to... No, I'm not going to get into Gone Girl lore. No, I'm <laughs> Danae Sams. I'm the other half of the Con Girls, half of the Samblings. You can find me on TikTok at Dunne Sams. You can also find me on Instagram at D N A Y S. And I'm so excited to talk more movies with you guys. That's right. The end. <laughs> Hi, I'm Derek. You can find me on Twitter or X and Instagram at Con Guy Derek. I'm happy to come back here and talk about more stuff. And I'll be posting about uh, conventions that I'm able to attend when I'm actually able to attend them and Lego. All right. And thank you for watching part one. Not just a standalone episode, but part one of our two episode. Indeed. Uh, 1984, the great uh, pop culture nerd movies of a great year. My name is Ben Cleaver. You can find me on all social media at B-E-N-K-L-I-E-W-E-R. Uh, I am on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I have a Twitter slash X, but I literally pinned a post that's like, I'm not using this anymore. Uh, so you can find me on threads actually um for everybody here at theconguy.com we'll see you next week for the second half of our show and remember everybody the reason that i'm drinking out of this red cup is because whenever ben cleaver shows up it's always a party good night everybody Woo! good night good night thanks for watching the con guy the official program of theconguy.com find us on the weeby geeks collective or anywhere you listen to podcasts